Happy Sabbath, brothers and sisters in Woodburn SDH. It's a privilege and my joy to join you this Sabbath for worship. I trust that you would have a wonderful week and that you would have went through our lesson that we would have studied. I know that we have um, been looking at some very impactful lessons and I trust that you will give this um, review uh, your undivided attention that your hearts will also be blessed. And feel free to, um, to share the link, to share with your friend so that they can also be blessed by this lesson review. Our topic today um, we are looking at is all nation and Babel. Now, the lesson is number five, and it's a very interesting lesson, and we must un must take time to look at it because it has a lot to do with our uh, the world that we are living in today. So, before I be begin, let us pray. Great God and our Father, I want to thank you, Lord, for your matchless love. Thank you, God, for taking us through another week. You have brought us on our knees. And we pray, dear God, may you get all the glory, honor, and the praise. I pray now, no, Lord, that you will send your anointing, your fresh Holy Spirit, to breathe your inspiration on my heart. That as I share um, this in this lesson review, that others will be here and they will be drawn closer to you, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All nations and Babel. Now, the memory text is from Genesis chapter 11 and verse 9. This is reading from the King James Version of the Bible. It says, therefore, its name is called Babel because there the Lord confused the language of all the earth. From there, the Lord scattered them abroad over the face of the earth. Now that is interesting. And we're going to look more in detail as we go through this lesson. Because our attention the the, the the writer is trying to get to us is that they this in this generation we find that it is after the flood that these people would have gone contrary to what God had established and God would have instructed them to do. In fact, when you look at Genesis, chapter 9 and verse 1 the bible tells us something interesting this is god's command to noah and his son and god says in verse 9 blessed and god blessed noah and his sons and said unto them be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth so god instruction to the, um, the, the, those who lived in the time of Noah, that's Noah and his sons, God told them, look, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth, scatter the, and, and fill the earth and let, let, it, let the earth be filled by you multiplying on the earth. Now, this is interesting. Why? Because... When you read Genesis chapter 11, you find something contrary to God's plan. God wanted, his, God wanted his people to scatter abroad in the earth. Now, when you read Genesis chapter 11, we find that um, these people, instead of scattering, you find them coming together in this confederacy. Now, Verse 1 of the Bible tells us, it says, And the whole, and this is chapter 11, and the whole earth was of one language 
and one speech. And it came to pass as they journeyed from the east that they found a plain in the land of Shinar, and they dwell there. And they said one to another, go to, let us make brick and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone and slime had they for a mountain. So we find that the people in the time of after the flood, that they came together and they said, let us build a tower that will reach up unto the heavens. And we find that these people were not trying to accept God's provision. Rather, they were trying to work their way into heaven. Now, we know that as Christians, that we do not work to be saved. We save and then we work. So work comes after you have met Jesus, right? So the, intro, the lesson highlights that after the flood, the biblical account shifts from a focus on a single individual, which was Noah, and, and to his three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. The particular attention on Ham, the father of Canaan, introduced the idea of Canaan, the promised land, the, the anticipation of Abraham, whose blessing will go through all the nations. So we find that in the end, in spite of human weakness, God turned evil into good. He always has, he has always as the last word. The curse of Ham in his father's tent and the curse of the confused nation at the Tower of Babel will eventually turn into a blessing for the nation. So we find that the lesson is pointing out that someone was cursed by the name of Ham. Now, this is one of Noah's son. We find the incident in chapter 9 where Noah had his vineyard and he would have been the husband man and he planted a vineyard in this is chapter 9, verse 20 to 21. He planted a vineyard and he drank of the wine and was drunken and he was uncovered within his tent. Now, between these two verses, hit, um, hit the point that the, the time frame between these two verses must have been over two years. And the reason is, it, 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 the, the, when you read and you do research on how long does a grape um, grow and take to mature and bear fruit, it's over two years. So between Noah planting and um, creating his vineyard and drinking wine from the, the fruit of his vineyard, you find that it was not nothing it was not in instantaneous. It was over a time frame. But the significance of this is that Noah was drunk. No, he would have just had an experience coming off of the mountain with God. He would have just obeyed God 100% in building the ark. But here we find that he would have fall fallen. So it is to tell us, brothers and sisters, that we can be righteous yesterday and be unrighteous today. Christianity is not something that is inconsistent. It is something that we must be cons live consistent, holy and obedient life because it is he that endure to the end, the same shall be saved. Now, we find Ham, Noah's son 
came in to where, where Noah was and he saw that his father was naked. And the Bible says he saw the nakedness of his father and he told it to his two brethren that was outside. Now, that raised a concern because instead of seeking to keep this thing private between him and God and his father, he seek to publicize it with the other brethren. So because of the act of Ham, we find that the Bible tells us that even when Shem, the other brother, and Japheth took a garment and laid it upon both um, the, of their shoulder, they went in backwards inside, not wanting to see their father's nakedness. They went in backwards and covered the nakedness of their father and their faces were backward and they saw not the father's nakedness. And no awoke from his wine and knew what his younger sons had done unto him. And he said, curse be Canaan. A servant of servants shall he be unto his brethren. And he blessed, and he said, Bless, Blessed be the Lord God of Shem, Ham, and of Shem and Canaan shall be his servant. So we find that God blessed Noah, but he cursed Ham's son. And it is very interesting that out of this curse, the Bible tells us that it, there came a blessing for the other generation. Now, as Christians, there are, some, there are times in our life, brothers and sisters, those who are watching online, there are times in our life that we experience a curse, where we experience difficulty, where we experience some things that seems to be a curse. But the end product is a blessing that God has put at the end of that curse or that child. We find even like issues like COVID-19. We find that many see COVID-19 and this pandemic as a curse. But the truth is what God can do is turn that curse into a blessing. And we find that the gospel is spreading like wildfire. We find that more people are fellowshipping and meeting online. More meeting can be held. We find many positive good things that God is doing through this pandemic. I want you to know, brothers and sisters, that what the devil has intended for evil, that God can turn it for good. So trust the hand of God as God worked in your life. Now, in addition, the curse contained a promise and a powerful blessing. The plain of the name Canaan, it derives from the verb Cana, meaning subdue. It is through the subduing of Canaan that God's people, the descendants of Shem, will enter the promised land and prepare the way for the coming Messiah, who will enlarge Japheth in the tent of Shem. This is the prophetic allusion to the expansion of God's covenant to all the nation, which will embrace Israel's message of salvation to the world. So, the truth is, the essence of this um, lesson is letting us know that what the devil has intend for evil, God can turn it into a blessing. Don't look at your curse or your circumstance, your sickness or your um, difficulty financially. Don't look at it as uh, a mere curse, but rather look at it 
as though God is working and God as a blessing awaits you at the end. Endure, fight the fight of faith. And he, that, because God says that he has a righteous crown for those who fight unto the end. Now, the Genesis genealogy is one that is critical. You know, at times I thought it was unnecessary. I thought sometimes it was more um, just full of fancy names um, and stuff. But when you get in reading the Bible and started to, I started to dig more deeply in this genealogy. Um, and I found something interesting that by studying the genealogy, you can much easier identify the oh, oh, the age of this earth. In fact, when you read about Noah um, in Genesis chapter 9, verse 28 and 29, two critical, two critical verses where the Bible says, and Noah lived after the flood 300 and 50 years. So after the flood, Noah lived 350 years. Put that aside and highlight that in your mind. Now, the Bible says in verse 29, all the days of Noah were 950 years and he died. So Noah lived 950 years. In other words, when you minus the 350 from the 950, you are left with 600. So before the flood, Noah lived 600 years when, until the flood came. After the flood, Noah lived 350 years. You can trace it all the way back to even Adam, when Adam had his um, third son, um, you find, you can, you can easily trace the genealogies and discover how old the earth is. And in fact, it is not what some scientists are teaching, that it is millions and billions of years, nothing like that. The Bible teaches um, that we are to study the word of God. We are to look more in depth to even in the, the, the simple genealogy that we see that um it is unnecessary but the truth is it is every part of the word of god is necessary and interesting so the genealogy when you look at the chronology information about noah's age it makes us realize that noah served as a link between the pre-flood and the post-flood um the last two verses, which I just read, uh, talks us, takes us back to the last link between the genealogy of Adam be, um, because Adam died when Lamech, Noah's father, was 56 years old. Noah must sure have heard the story of Adam, which he could have transmitted to his descendants before or after the flood because he lived before the flood and he lived after the flood and he was very mature so the bible um the genealogy also give us a more confidence in the word of god knowing that look this is no makeup story this is a real issue this is a real story that would have transpired in these um in these ancient days, we find that even um, the descendants of Noah, we find that Shem, Ham, and Japheth was um, very important because those um, were the those identify the lineage of which um, every other individual will flow through. So. Genesis chapter 11, verse 1 to 4, tells us about how the whole earth 
trying to achieve a purpose and they were trying to work their way into heaven. Now, this is interesting because building the Tower of Babel, when you look at the, the meaning or the, the Hebrew word for Babel, is, bel, is you have Bela and you have Beba, which, I, which, which means confusion or to be confound. Now, that word is the root word for Babylon, which we are preaching about um, in these last days. We find confusion that this issue came about when God would have seen the wickedness of this unity, this unity of building this tower all the way up to heaven, the atmospheric heaven. They were trying to reach to God. They were trying to take the place of God. In fact, when you look at this issue, it is more than what the um, monumental um, proportion of the tower. It is more than just a construction. It is more than just a monument. This um, building of the Tower of Babel was driven by a spiritual ambition to replace God. Because when, when you read the text, it is clearly revealed in the intention to make a name for themselves. No, only God can make a name for himself. In fact, when you read Isaiah 63 and verse 12 and 14, it tells you clear that only God can make a name for himself. And only God who can make your, and one's name great. So we find when the same word God used in Genesis chapter 1 and 26, we find it in Genesis chapter 11, where, where God would have said, let us make man. We find that these people said, let us make, or let us rather build um, unto us this tower. And this is telling us, brothers and sisters, that even these simple things that we see simple, God sees them more um, devastating. God sees them more as evil. Why? Because it is going against God's will. God's intention was them for them to live a life that reflects his character, not trying to work their way into God's kingdom. God has um, made a way already. God has done all that is necessary for us to be saved. Let us, by God's grace, accept this by faith and not trying to work our way into heaven. Now, Wednesday, um, let us go down is the word God would have used to show that he's in charge. God says in verse 5, it says, And the Lord came down to see the city. Now, this reminds me of when Adam would have sinned. When Adam would have sinned, the Bible says that God came down in the cool of the day. Right to visit Adam. And he asked him, where art thou? No, it is the same thing. God came down to visit these people who were united um, in their confederacy to go against God. We find that God came down and verse 6 says, the Lord said, Behold, the people is one. And they have all one language. And this they begin to do. And no nothing will be restrained from them. Which they have imagined. Now that text. Many are scared 
of it. But God concerns that nothing the people might imagine to, um, to do would be restrained from them. This does not express a divine fear that human might someday become as powerful as God. Rather, it conveys dismay that people unchecked would undertake extraordinary deeds of evil and defiance. In other words, if there's these people, if, if, if as a people, they set their minds to do evil, nothing will stop them from doing evil. And the truth is, it goes both ways. If we set our minds to do good, the devil cannot stop us. If we set our mind to, to study the word of God, God will reveal himself to us. It is true that many, when you, many times when we read the Bible, we come upon some difficulty. Some, we find that we can't understand everything. But the truth is, if we set our mind to know the will of God, if we set our mind and be determined to study the word of God, God will reveal himself of, um, to us. Now, I know my time is running, but I want us to um, look at the fact that the genealogies are not there for um, just holding up space in the Bible are to show who was born of who, but they, they, they have great significance to, for us today. Now, when you look at the whole incident of the Tower of Babel and how they were trying to build this tower up into heaven and God would have come down and, conf and confound them, their language, and the God would have, because of the confounding of their language, scattered them abroad. This is the original plan that God had. God wanted these people to be scattered, right? Not in a way of disunity, but God wanted them to spread out into the old earth, to fill the old world, not to, um, to, to join hands together in uniting to do evil. God wanted them to unite but not to do evil. So nothing is wrong with unity. Unity is what God wants for his people, but not to unite to do evil. And I want you to know that in these last days, right, Ellen White tells us that the, in these last days, that the, the, e the powers of evil, Satan and his angels, are uniting, they are consolidating, they are uniting, they are making plans to go against God's people and to persecute them. And Ellen White says that when we see all these things, that the final moments will be rapid ones. Therefore, brothers and sisters, let us keep our eyes fixed on Jesus so that the things of this world will go strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. I know one of, in the two minutes I have, with the redemption of exile. Now, this is where the lesson gets interested because when you compare Genesis 9 verse 1 and Genesis, 8, Genesis 11 verse 8 and 9, we find contrary issue because God says that we are to scatter. We are to fill the earth and multiply. And we find that in Genesis 11, we find the opposite. Now, God designed and blessing for humans was, they, was that they would multiply and fill the earth. Against God's plan, the builders of Babel prefer to stick together as the same people. One reason they said they want to build the city was so that they would do they would not be scattered abroad over the face of the old earth. Unfortunately, 
they sought to use their united power for evil, not for good. They wanted to make a name for themselves, a powerful reflection of their own arrogance and pride. Indeed, whenever humans open defiance against God, want to make a name for themselves, we can be sure it won't turn out well. It never has. Now, that is clear. When an individual seek to turn against God, or when a person try to go against the will of God, we find that it never turns out well. There might be some temporary joy and happiness, but it never long lasting. The devil will set us up on pedestal, but he is only setting us up to fall. Because the truth is, the Bible says, the wages are the payment of, or the reward of sin is death. My friends, let us rather suffer in Christ and enjoy the blessing of peace and happiness and joy and eternal life with Jesus then than to enjoy this life in sin and suffer for eternity. God wants us to choose who, this day who he may, we may serve. Whether we choose the path of Satan or the path of Christ or Savior. It is imperative that we make our decision uh, calling election sure. Because very soon God will burst that eastern sky. And God will ask us questions. God will execute his judgment. And every man must confess out of their mouth that Jesus is God. Because the records would be shown to him. And he will have to confess that just and true God Almighty are thy ways. I close with this um, quote from Patriots and Prophets. It says, the men of Babel, um, of Babel had determined to establish a government that should be independent of God. There were some among them, however, who feared the Lord but who had been deceived by the pretension of the ungodly and drawn into their scheme. For the sake of these faithful ones, the Lord delayed his judgment and gave the people time to reveal their true character. You see, God is merciful, brothers and sisters. And it says, as this was developed, the sons of God labor to turn them from their purpose, but the people were fully united in their heaven daring undertaking. Had they gone on unchecked, they would have demoralized the world in its infancy. Their confederacy was confound was founded in rebellion, a kingdom established for self-exaltation, but which God was to have no rule or honor. My friends, God is not pleased when we exalt ourselves, when we try to make ourselves good, when we do things to, to elevate ourselves above other people god is not pleased when we are selfish and self-righteous and self um sufficient god wants us to be humble to be kind to be united as a people he wants us to be um like him in character the truth is only our characters we can take to heaven so let us Use all our effort in building our character for eternity. May God bless you as you continue to worship with us um, throughout this Sabbath. I now turn you over 
to our um, moderator. 